She is a singer, songwriter, she's up and coming, and she's just fabulous. I was like, baby. That's the, the first start of the singing, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I need to get a hit today. Let's talk about the name of the album. Yeah. No shame, I have no shame. <laughs> <laughs> and then even then I'm going, what am I doing? Is the music better now? Or before? Before. I'm going to be controversial now. Every Drake song, you could sing it over one beat. Where's the chorus, bro? So you've had a bad dating life? That's rude. I. It's rude. Yeah. I'd rather earn my money singing in that pub than going to office nine to five. Do you have a favourite song from the album? Some people live for the power. Some people live just to play the game. Okay, that's enough. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Lexi, wow. Goosebumps, man. Seriously. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Inside Track with me, Luca Allen. I'm delighted on today's show to invite Lexi with me. She is a singer, songwriter, she's up and coming, and she's just fabulous. Lexi, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So talk to me about your mug. I know you brought it, brought it in your mug. Everyone brings in a mug. So tell me about your story. Okay, so my mug is basically the showing of what hot mess I am this morning. <laughs> no, so I came to Dubai two years ago now and I literally came for one gig with a small suitcase, like literally two pairs of underwear, one bikini, one dress for this gig and just never went home. So uh, it was all very ad hoc and just lastminute.com. And I just stayed. So I've been here two two years now, living my life. But any mug of sentimental value is definitely in the UK. Yeah. But this, <laughs> I was like, this is me this morning trying to pick an outfit, running late. And I was like, do you know what? I'm going to have to take the coffee in the car. And that is the... The epitome of my That's life. That's you. You're being you yeah. right there. That's it. You've got the lipstick stain on <laughs> yeah, there. I'm sorry. I, I, I brought in my, um, I'm a, I'm a believer. I've got believer fever. How do you feel about that? I'm jealous of that, to be honest. Yeah. I'm a big believer. You are? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Big. He's, he was, he's been around a while. I liked him from the beginning. I'm Did like, you? I'm like an OG believer. Like yeah. back in the day. Like yeah. I was like, baby, baby. Look at that. You know, back. That's the, the first start of the singing, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Um, so similar age to Justin. I don't want to ask your age, but similar age to Justin. I don't know about that, but I'll take yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> How did you get into this? I mean, was, were you singing one day in the shower as a kid and someone said to me, oh, you know, you've got a brilliant voice. Why don't you become a singer? How did no, it all I was here? actually, actually, my mum told me to stick to my dancing, to be honest. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my dad was more like, yeah, I think you've got a bit of talent there. But actually, I was going more into um, musical theatre. So I went to performing arts college to study like dance, drama, acting. Yeah. And then after two years, there was like an audition and it was meant to be just for the third years, but uh, the head teacher liked me. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> so she allowed me to audition and I got it. And basically I moved from college. I didn't graduate. I left college and I moved to London and I signed with Warner in a girl band. Um, what was it called? It was called Oh My. Oh My. And it was very electro pop. Actually, we wrote with some really cool producers and writers we were writing with um amir from rudimental mnek both of them quite famous yeah. now how old were you back then i was 18 okay yeah that's a big step to like obviously leave college and not pursue that and i was so get glad it, to get leave into music yeah, it I wasn't was, it wasn't right for you huh do you know what i I'm, I'm really bad but i hate learning once i've learned something i love it but yeah. the, the actual process of learning like every time i know i need to learn a song the dread is real, like I'm trying to put it off, like, no. But I'm like, once I've done it, it's good. But I yeah, struggle with that, like, learning environment. Even when I was at school, honestly, I was a depressed kid. I hated school. Like, I was fairly fine there. Like, I had friends. There was no, no bad story of yeah. bullying yeah, or anything yeah. like that. I just hated it. Yeah. I just wanted to do. Yeah. And, like, you know, sometimes now I speak to my friends, and they're like, oh, I miss the school days. I'm like, I oh, freaking don't. Yeah. It's funny, I love my it? life now. It polarizes, right? People have amazing experiences as a kid yeah. in school, and some people absolutely hate it. It wasn't a bad experience as such. I just didn't yeah. like that whole, I just loved doing. So wh where did your love of music start from? Um, well, I've always loved the music. I, was a dan I danced since I was a kid, and I liked to sing. I just wasn't really that good at it. 
Oh, I didn't know I was good at it. Um, but my mum and dad, I grew up listening to a lot of Motown. Um, Who are you listening to? Who was the influencer? Oh, Diana Ross, oh. Um, Michael Jackson. My dad's a big fan of Michael Jackson. And uh, we had this amazing record player. So there'd be sometimes like other random things. Yeah. But yeah. That's so are you, would you say you're more of a singer or more of a songwriter? Honestly, my joy comes from the songwriting and I enjoy singing a lot more when it's my own songs. Mm. Obviously for so long of my life, I've been, so, so much of my life, I've been earning my money by singing covers, of course. Like mm. at, at the end of the day, the reality of it is until you really make it, you have to make money. Yeah. So to me, there's no shame in singing covers. You know, there's this thing on X Factor that, oh, pub singer. Yeah, and what, bro? I'd rather earn my money singing in that pub than going to office nine to five. Yeah. That gives me the freedom to spend time like... And you actually enjoy it. Yes, sometimes I do. Sometimes I'd rather be at home having a Chinese takeaway watching Netflix. But it is what it is, do you know what I mean? I'd rather do that being the nine to five in an office. Because yeah. like, honestly, once you've done that, you don't feel much like writing anything. Whereas, you know, if I have to sing a couple of hours at night, I've still got the whole day to live. And also I'm my own boss. I travel. I do all, like, anything I want when I want. So that freedom allows me to be inspired and to write things. So who are your current sort of, <clears throat> um, you know, idols, if you like? I mean, who inspires you in the music industry right now? Do you know what? I try not to fixate on an artist as such as an inspiration. Um but there's people obviously that I really, really love. I love Miley Cyrus. I love a lot of older artists like um, Dolly Parton, Sam Cooke. Honestly, my music taste is very varied, but what I really, really love at the moment, country music, uh, I love Luke Combs. And I love this guy called Nathaniel Rateliff. Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard it. It's like folky blues music. Wow, that's quite a spread. Yeah, yeah. I like it's quite a spread. And there's another band, what are they called? Um, Lake Street Dive. I love them. So before we go any further, um, on my show, I always ask my guests if there's a question that they don't want to answer, there's a certain safe word that they, okay. would, that they would sort of say, right? Say, don't go any further, Luca. Stop it right there. Do you have a safe word for me? Uh, okay. okay, let's say, uh, we Dolly Parton. Let's do Dolly. Dolly Parton. There Dolly. <laughs> You're 18 years old, right? Mm -hmm. You start getting into this. When did you know that you actually could pursue this as part of an actual career? Like, what was the moment you realized, I'm actually pretty good at this and I think there's something there? Um, probably the minute I was signing the deal. <laughs> <laughs> and then even then I'm going, what am I doing? Yeah. Honestly, um, that was a whirlwind situation. It was never even something that I thought I'd be doing. It was literally, they, they came, it was a choreographer of Thriller came around all the colleges and auditioned us and they made us like dance and sing and then I got down the round and then they took us to London and then we had to do another dance in like dancing audition a singing audition and then there was another time they brought us to studio and I'm still like what what is happening and then they were like okay yeah we're going to put you in a girl band and you're signed with Warner and I'm still going, what is happening? And even after I've signed the deal, I was sat in London pinching my yeah. arm like, what has happened? Um, especially because I didn't graduate, you know, they took me from college. Yeah. Um, but honestly, it's uh, a very humbling career path because it's, I don't get excited for anything until after it happens. Yeah. What happened to Oh My? Oh My. Uh, do you know what? We had a lot of fun. And I think the timing was maybe... Unfortunate, because we were building a really good fan base, um, writing with awesome people. But at the time, I believe um, Little Mix came through X Factor and they were doing a very similar thing, but obviously immediately they have yeah. a mass of followers. Yeah. And then um, Stushi came out and they they released a song and it was quite scandalous, like they were, there were swear words in it and yeah. they were talking about quite... <gasps> extreme yeah. topics yes. and it blew up so quick so the head of Warner signed them and then shortly after this time we got we got let go do you feel do you feel that I mean the music industry is known for being very cutthroat very very difficult um, 
do you feel you have to sort of act in a certain way in a different way to get noticed to get recognition to get the deals in place um i feel like it changed a lot from what it used to be and they kind of expect you to be the full article before they sign you mm. and you have to be completely self-sufficient and then they just want to take you and then put their sprinkle and then take the credit for it. Yeah. But really, like, back in the day, you know, they'd take an artist, nurture them and help them build and grow. Now we need to know how to market, yeah. how to record the record, fund the record yourself. And then you send them the demo and they're like, oh, that's good. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've just spent <laughs> everything I had to make it, yeah. <laughs> you know. And it, that must be a, that state of distress, pure anxiety. Uh, is it good enough? Am I going to be able yeah. to make it? The thing is, anyone can be good enough. It's just, is all the other things, are the other things, be, have they been done properly? And can you afford them? Yeah. Yeah. Or the do money, you have someone else to pay? Did money come into play a lot for you in terms of getting your career up and running? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm really sorry to say, but like since I arrived in Dubai, I earn a lot more than I was earning in England. That has changed everything because, okay, so when I was back in England, say I did 3,000, 4,000 pounds a month, which actually on average is in a year, it's a good earning. But if the song production costs 1,000 pounds or something, and then you need to market, mas master it, mix it, all the things you have to do, that's before you've had a radio plugger. Mm. It's like, and and pay rent in London, you know, like. Yeah. It, of course, when I was going into the studio, I was like, I need to get a hit today. But you know, no one writes anything. No one works well in that situation. I I don't think it doesn't. It doesn't allow you to be creative, to be natural, yeah, it's to not, flow. It's just it's forced. It's, it's not a healthy no, environment to write in. But since. Since I've earned more money, of course, I, I, well, actually what I do generally is I make a deal per song. So I'm like, how much for the song? So I'm not like counting the time in the, the hours in the studio because yeah. I, I don't like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and since I've been less worried about money, I have chilled out. Yeah. I must admit that that comfort has allowed me to be like. It just relaxes you. It just, yeah. Yeah, and, you can and be it's sad that it, that is the reality of it, but it is because look, no people don't want to work for free. And someone said to me yesterday, I was on a yacht, and they were like, "Yeah, but you know, if they believe in you, they'll work for free." I'm like, "That's damp." So to think about what we just said now, so you're talking about the money thing, and you're saying yesterday I was on a yacht. So imagine within that period of time, you know, it's such it's such a you know massive transformation. If you yeah, like, but it's not my yacht. Just yeah. casually, yeah. It's, it's still, Dubai, it's isn't still, it? You get still. invited on these parties, yeah, but. Yeah. This this old fashioned idea that people work for free if they believe in you, yeah, maybe maybe there's a handful of people that would work for free because they really yeah. be, believe you. But yeah. goddamn, who's got the time to work for free? Yeah, no one. So what would you what what advice would you give to people who want to get into this line of work and that are a little bit worried about the money and the career side of things? Well, okay, my biggest regret is to not be completely self sufficient in terms of instrumentation and production. So if you're young. And you have the patience to learn logic or uh, whatever platform mm -hmm. to produce yourself. Yep. Or at least to get down a really good demo. If you can do that, you can make like really strong, strong, strong demos yep. to go, look, this is how the song should be. Yep. Just needs a little bit more work. Yep. Then that I recommend. Or to learn it, the instrument well enough to go and perform the songs live. You know, but... For me, I picked up the guitar very late. So yeah. I write my songs on guitar and I can play them. But if I'm doing something important, I'd rather to have the guitarist. Yeah. And it's my biggest regret. So nice segue into what are you currently doing at the moment? What are you recording? Tell me a little bit about your album. Okay, so <laughs> my album is called Diaries of a Disastrous Date in Life. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was We're going to go there later, by yeah. the way. Yeah. You might need to do your Dolly Parton uh, card. No, you, I'll, t I'll tell you all, I'm, no shame, I have no shame. <laughs> um, and to be honest, this is an uh, accumulation of songs over the last few years. A good couple of them are from written in Dubai. Yeah. There's lots of inspiration for music here. Um, <laughs> and, but yeah, so it's basically what I've decided to do is release a song a month. So obviously during COVID, it's been tough and, you know, 
there was a bit of a, a delay. But last year, uh, I basically knocked out a bunch of songs with producers. And again, with the money that I've earned while I was in Dubai, I was able to actually work with producers that I really love, get the songs finished. And I'm releasing them one song a month for the whole year. Very nice. So let's talk about the name of the album. Yeah. What's the story behind that? To be honest, my songwriting style is very um, storyteller. Again, yeah. inspired by country for sure. Yeah. And I just write my, I'm very literal. Um, but I think I have, I think, <laughs> I shouldn't really say, but I think my talent is taking a feeling and putting it to words that I know one day when people hear it, women hear it especially, they're gonna relate to it and be like, oh my God. I don't know when that day will be. I hope it's soon, but I just know. I know that the people are going to relate. And I think t taking this emotional feeling and putting it into words, is that's my thing. But, um, oh God, I forgot the question. So you've had a bad dating life. I mean, this is what I'm taking from, obviously, the name of the, the, no, name of the do album. Do you know what? That is, it'd be rude to say I've had a bad day. All my boyfriends have been really nice. But yeah, since Dubai, okay. since being in Dubai, it has been quite an eye-opening experience. Okay. Listen, some of it's been amazing and some of it's been disastrous. I just think there is a different attitude in the region. And I'm not saying specifically from people from here. I'm saying from all people, women and men from wherever Everywhere. they're from. Yeah. But it's, there's something about this town. Mm. I don't know what it is, but everything feels so disposable. And I really struggled for six months coming to terms with that how disposable I was mm. to anyone yeah. and not just me and I find it insane you know I have also so many amazing women in my life it's not just beautiful yes there's a lot of beautiful women here in Dubai we take care we're going to the gym we're in the, on the beach in bikini but they're smart women man you know like and I'm thinking if we were in London like you'd be snapped up people say to me all the time oh how have you not got any I'm like I can like, name 10 amazing women in my life and all of us having one knock back after another, like, I, I don't know, it's yeah. quite something. <laughs> so you, talk, you talked earlier about feelings, right? And, and sort of getting the words down from what you're feeling. I mean, does it, in a weird way, does it help your career having some of these really, you know, negative experiences to help then fuel that emotion put that down on paper and then to produce a great song it helps my creativity for sure like that's my buzz honestly like sometimes i was saying the other day to someone i don't know how i don't want to use the word normal person let me call it a muggle i don't know how a muggle processes pain or heartbreak yeah. you know when like something happens and like to get up and go to a you know a job an office job and have to just sit in that like pain of heartbreak oh my god how they do it because for me it's such the the songwriting is like the therapy it's like an hour with a therapist because I, I can't do anything else I'm like I have to sit and I have to like get it out yeah. and afterwards sometimes it's over days like I might not get the song in one day but I start something and then I'll come back to it and the words just gradually come together like a puzzle. Yeah. And then when I when I sit back and play this song and I'm like, oh, I've just made that pain into a piece of art. Yeah. That's where I get my, I don't know, I get a kick from Beautiful. that. And honestly, I should sit down and write more structured. And I tell myself to do it a lot. I'm like, come on, Lexi, you're gonna sit down and write today. <laughs> I just never do. Do you know what? I just live my life and then something happens, good or bad, and then I'm so, enthralled with inspiration that I have to write then. Yeah. And it seems and to be- And you can't stop. Once you're in the mood, once you're in the flow, it yeah, just all comes out. Yeah, three or four songs in a day. And like I had a situation yeah. recently, don't ask. <laughs> and then, and I was literally like, for three days, yeah. like three or four songs, like I'm sending yeah. voice notes to yeah, my yeah, manager. Yeah. Yeah. And and then now I haven't wrote, I haven't, I haven't written again in like four weeks. Yeah. Do you have a favorite song from the album? I don't know, it changes because you get, I get excited about the current song that I just got. Can you give us a bit of a flavor of what that's like? 
Can you, can you sing us maybe a chorus line or okay, I'll sing intro you, line? Okay, I'll sing you my current single that's out. Okay. Because um, this, this is a fun story. I went to New York, um, but before I went there, this, this guy slid into my DMs. By the way, can I just say, I love that phrase. I've been hearing it for ah. years, but it's always slid. slid. It's, it's never anything else. You know, there's other adjectives, there's other what words you could use. What can we use instead? You he know, dropped. Popped into. He my, popped by. Yeah, I mean, there's other words, they could, but it's always, everyone always uses he the nipped. word slid, you know, slide into my okay. DMs. Yeah. Well, he nipped into my DMs. He DM. nipped in, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, sounds like he's going to Tesco. <laughs> um, yeah, he nipped into my DMs. And, uh, anyway, we. I thought like, uh, I don't know, it was just random. It was yeah. super random because yeah. it's someone that was based in New York. He's a New Yorker? Yeah. And I was like, how have you f even come across me? And he was like, oh, you know, your song came up in this page or whatever. So anyway, the, the convo ended like, uh, if you're ever in New York, let me know. Anyway. Mm, there we go. I went, great and I was city, in New York. Great city. Huh? I love New oh. York. Great city. Do you know what? I love it more now I live in Dubai. Because when I was in England, I was like, I don't want to go on a... I want to go somewhere yeah. sunny. But now yeah. I live in Dubai, I, I, yeah. I appreciate city trips more. Anyway, we met there when I was in New York and uh, I remember coming back after the trip and I, I don't know, I just thought it was cool. Yeah. I thought that's my kind of vibe, you liked my him? kind of guy. Yeah. Um, we only spent like literally a few hours, but I remember just being like, wow, I just wanna, just wanna book a flight back and go and just hang out more. <laughs> and I remember just like be, really being uh, like having the urge to just book and just go. And um, so I write this. I wrote this song. I pick up the guitar and I'm like, uh, I want to do something crazy. But uh, I'm thinking, if I d if I do, he's going to think I'm I'm nuts. I'm a psycho. <laughs> so I kind of wrote it. So the song is like uh, it goes, Yeah, I want to do something crazy. Would you come along with me, baby? Sitting here with my margarita. Thinking about how much I want to see you, but oh, I know it's stupid, oh, oh, impulsive. Yeah, I want to do something crazy. Would you play along? And then anyway, the chorus comes right, in. So can I just, just wow, <laughs> wow, seriously, wow, <laughs> beautiful. Oh. You have to go on my Spotify to hear the chorus. This chorus is good. Beautiful. But it's kind of like if you if I book that flight to NYC, you know, because the so universe what's it was what's the, song, what's the song called? Put Yourself Out There. Put Yourself Out. So that, sorry, that was what I was getting back to is we've become so scared and especially in Dubai to be honest. Yeah. When I like someone, I'm so nervous to just say, man, you're cool. Like, I'd love to hang out again. Because yeah. it seems like every time I do, they run 10 miles. <laughs> In the opposite direction. Yeah, they've probably never <sighs> met anyone like you. That's probably the reason. They're like, I don't know. I don't quite know how to deal with this person. I have know? been told I can be quite intimidating because yeah. I'm quite blunt. But I don't know. But even my more softer, let's call them softer, delicate yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah. Even they have the same problem. So. I well, I, th I think you're great. So I think oh, that obviously you. don't change. Keep doing There's what you're doing. Still hope for me. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> don't, don't, worry, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. So we're gonna play a little bit of a game now, right? It's okay. not really a game. We're gonna, we're gonna pick some balls out of a bag, right? Okay. Uh, and we're gonna rotate. So do you wanna do the honors, start off? So see what's in there and just read out what it says and we'll have a chat about it. Okay. One hit wonder or average career? Right, so it's pretty self-explanatory, but there are, there are artists out there in the world who they've written one great song, they've performed one great song. Chesney Hawks comes to mind, right? The one mm. and only. And they've made so much money and they're so well known for one mm. song. Um, but there are others who've had, they've had decent careers, they've had longevity, but they've never really sort of been consistently the top of the charts. Okay. So what would you prefer? Would you prefer to that, write that one hit song that everyone will always remember you by? Or would you like to have a decent career that gives um, you Can know, you give me an longevity? example of the person with the average career? Just so it's I really, can- I can't, the <sighs> top of my head. Like who? Yeah. Like when you say they're not at the top of the charts, but are they in the charts? They're in the charts. So let's say they're uh, they're they're um, they're between ten to twenty, right? If the old school, right? So it's decent. It's not bad. It's not bad. I can't think of anyone on top of my head. You put me on the spot now, but someone that hasn't, or some group that hasn't necessarily got to the very very yeah. top of the game. Who's richer, the one hit wonder? Yes. Oh, that is hard. I do love money, but. I don't know what my purpose in life would be if I didn't have 
a continued career. Yeah. So for the state of my mental health <laughs> <laughs> and my sanity, I think a, 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 a good, solid a decent career. career. A seven out of ten, right? A seven out of ten career. Yeah. Very solid, decent income. Yeah, I know. think so. But, I think so. But in 20 years' time, they may not have remembered who you are because you never had that one song that everyone will know. You know what I mean? So that's kind of where I'm, I'm leaning towards yeah. with this. And then, so fame comes into it, money comes into it. Do you know what? It's because I know the person I am. I'd love to say one hit wonder, be rich, and then ride off into the sunset in Bali and go and do hippie paintings on the beach. And Beautiful stuff country. My whole life. Beautiful country, Bali. But I need purpose yeah. to keep my sanity. Yeah. Like, so have you ever actually thought about what you'd actually do if you were stinking rich? What would wake you up in the morning? What would give you the purpose of the day? And I think I'd lose my mind. So I'm going to take. I don't, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about saying it out loud, but I think I'm going to take an average, steady career. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So pass me back the bag okay. if you can reach over. One. It's nice because you have no idea what's in here. Yeah. A little bag of goodies. Right, let's see. Uh, ah, right. Is the music better now or before? Before. Why, why is it better before? I'm going to be controversial now, but let me tell you take, something. Take this back. Every Drake song. Yes. Every Drake song, you could sing it over one beat. Yeah. Every single one could probably be over the same trap beat. Yeah. Where's the where's the chorus, bro? Yeah. yeah. Like give me I like I like to hear a catchy cheesy melody. Yeah. Give me Michael Bolton, give me Train. Like come on. Is like, he the ultimate crooner Michael Bolton? When you come when you think about crooning, like you know, you've got the you've got the simply reds of this world. You've oh, got the Michael Bolton. Also Bolters great. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil no, Collins is part of that part all of that kind of, them, of mix. Yeah. It, Soul, Motown, even R and B. Like, okay, R and B music back in the day. Like when I was at school, do you know what I mean? The catchy choruses. I remember what's that song? If I had one wish, we would be best friends. Da, 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 da. Like beautiful melodies. Like now it's just like we can't prune the button, no, <laughs> can't prune the button, no, my yo team. <laughs> And like you can sing all of the same song over one beat, and like I've, I don't even know the difference between people are like, oh yeah, you you know that rapper. Doo -doo -doo. I'm like, I ain't got a clue, bro. I haven't got a clue. Yeah. Like, speak to me about like country, and then maybe I know. So <laughs> do you do you see there's a role for you to play into bringing people back into what music used to stand for, how it used to be seen, and the types of melodies that were that were around? Do you know what? I just write songs that I like, and. Um, Maybe I'm not meant to say it, but I love my own music. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I just I just write songs I like. I don't overthink it too much. I don't walk around claiming that I'm trying to change music forever and bring back something. I just write the songs yeah. that I like. Yeah. They're my stories. And what I hope is that one day a bunch of people are going to like them too, as much as I like them. Yeah. Um, I believe they will. I, honestly, now... I've had years of uncertainty and years of not believing in myself, but for once in my life, I'm like, do you know what? I'm ready, I've got it, my music's good. I just need to figure out how the right people are gonna hear it. Yes. And then- um, Do you think you have an old soul? I do. I am literally Grandma Grucock. <laughs> um, I do have an old soul, because yeah. Because you're refreshingly honest, you know what you want, you don't try yeah. and pretend to be something else. Yeah got that from the first minute that I met you oh. <laughs> and you appreciate the lyrics you appreciate the emotion and that's kind of again very I do different love to, lyrics yeah. I love lyrics I love a story yeah. but I think it's I think there's still a lot of people out there that really do love lyrics yeah. but it is definitely a lot of the modern music is kind of throw away lyrically I want to yeah. say yeah. and so like and I totally respect people that love melody and, and, and vibes. And I can get it, you know, I get why in a club Drake comes on. Of course, I, of course I rock out to it in the club yeah. and whatever. And the house music people love and it's tribal. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. You know, you're in Amazon. Yeah, you're in the moment. You're, you're feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, when I'm at home, obviously what I listen to is, is very different. But uh, there's a time and a place for all music. And that's what I like. Yeah. And I get, I get why people want to, people want to escape their crappy lives. You know, they want to, they want to not overthink uh, and just feel 100%. vibes. So I get that as 100%. well. 
You ready for the next question? Next ball? Yeah. All right. Oh, that's e. Conquer US or UK? Yes. So a lot of people in the UK, when they grow up as a music, uh, in the music industry, they have this thing where they have to be big in the US. It's a bigger market. It's where, you know, all the biggest, not the big stars, but a lot of the global stars come out of the US. So for them, it's about how do we conquer the US? Mm. Um, that was at least back, I'm talking 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, and even beyond that, the Beatles, even they struggled to some degree being able to conquer the US. They were yeah. so big in obviously UK and the rest of the world. So where do you stand on that? Do you care about the US? Do you care more about the UK? Are you patriotic? Does it not matter which country you just want to make great music? What are, you, what are, your, what are your views on that? Mate, honestly, I couldn't care less if I was famous in Germany, India, the US or the UK, as long as I'm making a ton of money for my original music and, and people love my product. Yeah. However, if I have to... Of course, US. I'm, I like country music. Yeah. It's the home of it. I'm going to go again in uh, in April. I'll go to um, LA, Nashville, New yeah. York. So I'll do a little trip. If I ever get Dolly Parton on the show, I'll try and I'll try and invite you over. Please do. Yeah. I'll just rock up in the middle of the interview. <laughs> right, right, Bring your guitar. Bring How your guitar. are you, girl? Very nice. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Pass, pass, make the bag. <laughs> I think we've got a couple left potentially in there. Oh. So we have here. Is love a battlefield? And I kind of think I know the answer to this. But. It shouldn't be. My mother and father, I don't know why I've said mother and father, I always say mum and dad, that's very weird that I said that. Uh, my mum and dad have been together like 35 years and they're amazing. And they always said to me, they didn't argue until they had children. Mm. When there's really serious decisions to be made. Uh, and, you know, of course there has to be... Uh, meet in the middle attitude if you have different opinions on things but through their dating and whatever they did they didn't argue and I'm like I love that mm -hmm. and I'm very much I'm not an arguer I don't like to I'm not you're a lover uh, you're not a hater you know? yeah it's clear if I have to argue then of course I'll argue and occasion of course life happens but it shouldn't be it should be easy and that's the one thing that annoys me more actually at the moment is dating should be fun whether it works out, whether it doesn't, if we could all be honest, it's like, okay, we have a nice date, but you're not really for me. Yeah. Awesome, you're lovely, but no. If we could all be so honest, it would be fun and yeah. uh, enjoyable. But I think what I've noticed since being here is people aren't honest. Mm. And they would rather send you all the way down the garden path, pretending that something, and then, and then it's not. So Which love is, like is a, psychologically yeah, yeah, yeah. like just mind. So to paraphrase, love is a battlefield, but it should not be a battlefield. And, and again, communication, honesty, openness, yeah. all keys to doing that. Yeah. Uh, do you want to have kids? You talked about your parents and then when they had kids. I assumed that I would one day. I think we all kind of get raised to just assume that one day I'm going to get married with children, especially like I'm from a small town in Leicester, like in England. Of course, I kind of assumed. But I can honestly say, I'm, as I'm getting older, I'm not getting any closer yeah. to wanting one of those vile little creatures in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think for me, I haven't... The sad thing about my life is I don't know if I've ever actually truly been in love. Mm. So I, I'm very much um, a believer of like, I wouldn't bring a child into the world unless my situation is strong. And I think maybe one day if I meet someone amazing yeah. and really, really do fall in love, maybe then I'll be like, do you know what? I want a little person that's half yeah. me yeah. and half you. Yeah. But un until I feel like that, I wouldn't bring a child into the world because yeah. I think that's not fair. And that's the right thing to do. Yeah. I, but I love kids. I'm good with kids, but you know I like to give them back. Saturday, <laughs> Saturday night, we might need a babysitter, so I'll give you. I'll give you a call. Um, I think I'm gigging. <laughs> are we, are, 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 on that note, let's get another ball. Should we get should we another ball? Yeah. Is it my turn or your turn? It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. I did it Can last me? time. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. You never thought you were going to be picking balls out of a bag. Karaoke time. hero. Yeah. So when you're when you're singing karaoke, if you can only choose one singer and you're going to sing one song. Who is your karaoke hero? Oh, how drunk am I? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, okay. So if I'm if I'm um, competent, <laughs> if it's early in the evening, yes. I'll probably do uh, Alicia Keys. If I ain't got you, 
Brilliant this is song. a crowd pleaser. Brilliant song. Everyone Tough song. knows it. Tough song. It is. It is. It, I need a good warm up. Tough. <laughs> could you could you do a quick a quick for my benefit because I love that oh song. Oh my god! I didn't warm up for that. It's too early. Okay. Um, I'll I'll give you the verse. Tr give me the verse. Some people live for the fortune. Some people live for the fame. Some people live for the power, yeah. Some people live just to play the game. Okay, that's enough. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Lexi, wow. Goosebumps, man. Seriously, beautiful. So nice. If I've had a few bebs and I've got a cowboy hat, I'll probably do Can't Fight the Moonlight. Uh, that was <laughs> Leanne Rhyme. Was that Leanne yeah. Rhyme? That was the movie. You can try yeah, yeah. to resist. <laughs> what was that movie? What was that movie? That Coyote Ugly. Coyote Ugly. Yeah. Iconic film. Icon okay. Iconic film. Uh, I think we've got time for one more, right? We'll do okay. We'll do one more. You pick it out. It's closer to you. It's okay, to you. okay. What if we go... Okay, here it is. Okay. Adele or Amy Winehouse. Oh. Now... That's rude. I. It's rude. Yeah, it's rude to ask me that. Why, why is it rude? <laughs> <laughs> why is it rude? <laughs> No, because they're both brilliant. They're both amazing. And again, I, I I don't know you so well, but I know enough about you to know that you can appreciate, you know, strong strong women, fantastic voices, emotional lyrics. Um, both have so much meaning behind their songs. Go with your gut instinct. Your gut <sighs> instinct's always the right one. Do you know what? I'm going to say... I'm going to say Adele, and I'll tell you why. Because I feel more connected to her as a person. I mean, f like I respect an artist that keeps it together. They have a great career. Of course she's herself. She's been through heartbreaks, but you know, she's solid. Yeah. I find that inspiring. Yeah. I think there's this um, thing in music, like uh, it's cool to be a mess. Mm. Do you know what? No, mm. it's not. Mm. Being a mess is not cool. Yeah. I, you know, yes, of course, it inspires music. Awesome. Her, her music is timeless, yeah. Amy, because, you know, what she went through. But also, should we celebrate this as a life choice? No. Yeah. Celebrate Adele because she has her stuff together. She's doing yeah. her career and she lives a life and she keeps... So focused. from a role model perspective. Yeah. And this matters to you. And again, the more I talk to you, the more I realise I'm covering that. You, there is a social responsibility almost with what you're trying to do. Yeah. What you stand for, being authentic, being yourself, yeah. but also wanting to fall in love, not trying to be yeah. apologetic about things yeah. that, you know, you can't force, being open, being communicative, um, having pride in who you are and what you really like. And all of these things tell me that you're you're someone who is potentially not in the right era anymore. Mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of going against the grain to some degree. Um, but I love it. And I think it's really, really refreshing that you have this this viewpoint on the world. <laughs> So, so now we, let's move away from the, 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 the bag of balls <laughs> and let's talk about you. So why do you do what you do? What is the reason that you get up every morning and you try and write a great song? What is the reason behind all of that? Um, I just don't know what else I'd do, really. <laughs> uh. I remember one time when I was thinking I hated college and I wanted to drop out and my mum and dad were like, what are you going to do if you leave? I was like, I don't know. Maybe I'll be a wedding planner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't wake up and think, oh, I'm going to write a great song today. Um, like I said, I just live and the songs come when they come. I mean, I, I guess for a long time I've separated my life into two parts. How I earn my money and my bigger passion. Um, so, you know, the gig in is like my nine to five. Yeah. Singing the covers and... Um, what do you feel like when you're, when you're singing, like on stage or... Do, what emotion does it bring to you? Is it... It's so hard to answer that question because, like, people live in this world where they think we're always having a good time. But honestly, sometimes, like I told you, I want to be at home watching TV yeah. and having a takeaway. And sometimes, do you know what? I'd love a Saturday night off. Yeah. Sometimes I'd love not to miss yeah. my best friend's wedding. Yeah. But why? I, I miss everything. I miss everything because I'm always working. I'm always working antisocial hours. 
and you know you become a little bit numb do you, do you feel this work ethic and trying to make money make a career do you feel there's an obligation for you to help family out is there is there something driving that from a from a social perspective the thing is um well if i ever got absolutely loaded i'd definitely help my family out but i personally don't have a pressure to to help my family financially but i do know uh, there are other people that do have that and especially in different cultures and stuff that there is you know I think English people as gen in general like uh, we don't have so much pressure to be like oh well she raised me now I owe her yeah. but I know in some countries and cultures it's kind of like that yeah. like she raised me so now she's old I take care of her like we do so for me my my family are very supportive yeah. so there's no pressure just me doing my thing yeah. but the thing is when I do my original music this is what I love and I've got to a really awkward point actually in my career where I'm really honestly I am dreading going to sing covers yeah. especially in this region if I go and sing in an English pub and I sing something they're gonna be yeah they're so chill man like yeah. they're all like okay some places yeah they get excited but a lot of places like there's no reaction yeah. and it's a little bit soul destroying but when I sing my original music I'm somewhere else I'm literally like off uh, You've it's a form of escapism yeah I just love it it's I love it and but, what, but, what, but what are you escaping from again so every you do this for a reason and that's what I'm trying to get towards you you're doing it either because of how it makes you feel or it's from from not wanting to feel something else Potentially. For me, you know honestly, you know it's not say? like that. Okay. I'm actually, I'm sorry to say, I'm not very messed up. I'm yeah. actually probably one of the happiest people you'll meet. You know what it is? I, I used to obsess with what I was wanted to achieve. Like, oh, I've got this goal. Yeah. And the, the more I wanted it, the more you push away everything that you want. Yeah. There's something so unattractive about desperation you know yes. but when you want something so badly yes. and I see it so often even amongst my friends and I totally get it we're so desperate to achieve what we want to achieve but it stinks yeah. you know the more you can be chill the more things start to come and it it, it, it dawned on me I read a couple of books one of them was uh, the what was it the subtle the magic or the subtle art of not giving a f yeah, yeah. um and then i read something by napoleon hill think and grow rich and there was like a handful of books i read at this time and i just something just changed i used to suffer severe anxiety severe depressions even i told you as a child i was like a depressed child i remember in fact one time being i used to work in a pub and i was pulling a pint and i remember thinking i ever want to be asleep or just not here and um, there was this turning point. I was hating gigging. I was sick of people didn't clap. I was just wanted to be like, you there in the front eating your steak, <laughs> clap. <laughs> you know, one day I'm going to be, <laughs> you know, sometimes you get this urge to be like, God, if you knew one day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it and you're going to wish you'd have clapped for me over your steak. And, you know, I'd got to this really toxic, angry feeling and I was, and so I just, a few things happened. I decided, and I advise this to anyone, my number one goal in life is to be happy, to wake up happy. It sounds cheesy, but this, what makes you happy changes. Maybe the people that make you happy changes. Maybe the activities that you do change what brings happiness. But if the focus is to be happy each day, everything in your life comes to that goal, things are gonna be great. The thing is we feel pressure to keep certain friends, to keep certain things because it's our identity. Oh, Lexi the singer. So it's like, who am I if I'm not the singer? But do you know what? If one day I don't enjoy this anymore, then I'm gonna stop. There was a time I put so much pressure on myself to deliver. I was like, wait, why am I a singer again? I don't even know why I'm doing this because I don't even enjoy it. 
And that was the turning point. I was like, I'm not even enjoying it, but what else am I going to do? So I was like, either I have to just enjoy it, relax so much to just enjoy it or not do it. And I think it's the same with friends. We have people in our lives because they've been there over time. But sometimes actually it's to sit and go, I don't even enjoy hanging out with that person. You just make me laugh. Like doesn't encourage me in the right direction doesn't uh, really add anything. And it's happened to me so many times again with boyfriends. Yeah. There's nothing really wrong, but I'm like, it doesn't bring anything to my life. That sounds savage. Yeah. And, and I'm like, it just has to go. So unless someone brings something, I just, I just don't have time for it. And I think being more frugal with your time and your energy, and that was what the book said. I loved, I loved this analogy. She uses your time, energy, and money as a, an F budget. Mm. She calls it an F budget. Um, and when I started to think of it like that, she, it was about being selfish, but without being an ass, basically. Yeah. And she's saying, you know, okay, maybe, listen, no offense, guys, maybe I don't want to come to the baby shower. Yeah. But we're mates, so do you know what? I'm going to send you a nice hamper. Yeah. And I'm going to sit on my sofa with my chocolate and my tea and watch my rom-com, you know. And, and you guys have your lovely baby shower with yeah. a lot of little squirts running around. And yeah. I'm going to send you a lovely hamper. You know why? Because I care for you. Yeah. But I don't really want to come. Yeah. And it's my time and my energy. It's my only day off, my Sunday. I've, you know, so she's, yeah. it sounds really rude. But you know, like so many times in life, we feel so obligated to do things that we really don't want to do. And we spend so much time doing it. And it's like... This was the turning point. I don't know, small things like this, but anyway. I don't think you realize how powerful everything you just said was. <laughs> That's it. I mean, there are so many little mini insights in all of all the things you just said. Every, what strikes me the most is you come across as someone very much in control of who they are, very confident in what you are and what you're not, and who you're prepared to be and who you're prepared not to be. Yeah. There's so much confidence that comes from you. It's it's actually quite inspiring. Yeah, it took a long um, time. <laughs> it took a long time. But again, it's all part of the journey. It's all part of that yeah. development. That 18-year-old who didn't really know no. what life was going to throw Terrible. at her. And obviously coming to Dubai is part of that. Falling in and out, potentially of love or not. Meeting this person in New York. All of this plays a part in developing who you are. And you take little bits and pieces. And the 18-year-old was severely, like I, I said to you, severely ang anxious and depressed. Like I remember once I was on tour. We were in the girl band and we supported the Saturdays. Yeah. And... Like, after the show, there'd be always 10 comments. There'd be, like, nine or 10 amazing, oh, my God, you guys are so cool. And there'd be one, and it'd be like, what the hell are you wearing? You look disgusting. Oh, no. You can't sing. And I swear to God, the one I would go to bed remembering was yeah. this one. In fact, I even did uh, tours in schools in England. I'd go and do my show, and then I'd talk to the, the children about, like, uh, cyberbullying and social media and using it healthily and because it's there's so many nasty people online yeah. it's yeah. so easy to be nasty online but it used to affect me so so badly severely like honestly t if I'd have got big back in the day with the band I would have not have been emotionally prepared and actually the understanding of people like God Bieber you know that they've had to learn as they've gone along how to deal with this. Yes. It, no wonder you sometimes turn around and want to punch some guy <laughs> in the back. I can, I can forget, I understand him totally. I'm, I'm a believer. Yeah. Um, Lexi, it's been, honestly, it's been eye-opening. It's, I've been, I've loved, I've loved oh, your boys. You have a beautiful you. voice. <laughs> I, I, I sincerely wish you all the very best of luck in, in your career. Thank I hope you. we see you again on the show. Um, when awesome. you're not, uh, when you're super rich and famous, you don't forget about us. Um, but um, look, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for being part of this. And, Thank you for uh, we'll having me. We'll see you soon. See you.